patients. The intention of our meetups is to provide a safe space for people to express and heal, all under the guiding principles of love and acceptance. Pretty straightforward. It's an ongoing conversation and really be a place for community and pride. So meet our special guest speaker uh, who will guide us on her transformative healing journey with osteoarthritis, Susie Audra, PhD. Born in Lebanon and raised in the Far East, Susie is a multi-talented force of nature with a wealth of life experiences and creative expertise. She wears many hats as an intuitive artist, a certified yoga instructor, an energy healing practitioner, and a trauma release expert. Susie is the guiding light behind somatic movement and creative process workshops designed to empower individuals to embrace and unlock their boundless creative potential. Susie is not only a gifted artist, but also the creator of Archetypes, a therapeutic painting process that unlocks the healing power of artistic, got more people trickling in, of artistic expression. She is the visionary founder of Bija Healing Sanctuary, a haven for transformation and self-discovery. With a PhD earned from the California Institute of Integral Studies, Susie's research delves into the profound realms of the states of presence and insight in the painting process. As a published author, Susie has left her mark on the world with her thought-provoking work, Sex in the 21st Century, Healing Collective and Individual Trauma. Beyond her creative pursuits, Susie's spirit thrives in the presence of large bodies of water, where she finds solace and inspiration. She's an avid treasure hunter, seeking vintage gems, a joyful dancer, and if you're fortunate, you might even find her perched up on a tree. <laughs> Welcome, Susie. The floor is yours. Thank you, Noe. Oh my gosh, what a what an introduction. I just have to like live up to it now. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> The tree climbing is not a big deal, it's the <laughs> other stuff. <laughs> um, wow, where to start? My healing journey. <laughs> it would probably take a lot of volumes, but I'll try and distill it as much as I can. I'm actually not um, a big talker, so... <laughs> um, I guess it began a while ago and the symptoms are what alerted me to the fact that there's something called healing like I never thought I got into my 40s well into my 40s before I realized that there's a thing called healing you know before I was just going on about my life doing my things going to work raising my children being a wife taking care of everything and um, I never even thought about healing or oh maybe I need to heal from something it never occurred to me it was when I started my PhD program in at the California Institute of Integral Studies and it's funny because I chose their transformative studies program not even knowing what that meant <laughs> literally what it's going to do to my life. <laughs> and um, as soon as I got into that program, I s it, the whole transformation began. It's partially because of the material that I was studying and was immersed in, because I think that it's specifically catered to do this for the individual. Aside from being able to help either people later on, it's also meant to assist the person with the transformation. Add to that, that a couple of years before I started my PhD program, I had been diagnosed with osteoarthritis in my neck between C5 and C7. And the first thing that I was told by the neurosurgeon was that I need surgery. Here's your 800 milligrams of Motrin, go take this and when you're ready for surgery, let me know. I'll put a screw here and I'll put a screw there and we'll cut over here and we'll cut. This is my neck that they're talking about. <laughs> and um, I was just like, my, my jaw dropped. I was like, mm, that's 
probably my gonna be like my last option if even like I'd rather just not even address it that way so I opted not to do it but I also opted not to take the Motrin and it was quite the journey because I would have never thought to seek help in alternative ways, but it was one of my professors at California Institute of Integral Studies who suggested that to me because I had shared with her one night while I was in tears about what am I going to do with my neck? I was literally walking around with a brace. And she said, have you looked into alternative ways to heal it? And I said, not really but I'm open to it. So I began looking for acupuncture ses sessions and that was one thing that was really beneficial. But in addition to that, I studied energy medicine and I did that as well on myself and breath work, the breath work and all these modalities I actually am available to offer to people. And I think, honestly, the key to my healing, if I was to look back on it and really like um, understand exactly what happened and how come I didn't need surgery and now I'm not in a wheelchair, um, I teach yoga, I go everywhere, I do, I work seven multiple things. Um, and sometimes I wonder, had I done the surgery, what would have become of me? So many things could have gone wrong, right? And like that was like an intuitive call on my part to just say, no, I'm not going that route. That's why I always encourage people to be very sovereign about their body and what they put into it, what they accept being done to it, basically. Um, so the, the key to my healing, I think I would credit personally to meditation specifically Vipassana, and I don't know if many people are familiar with that. It's a insight meditation where you sit with what's arising inside you. The emotions, the traumas, the negative self-talk, all of that. You just sit with it for hours, not five minutes a day, but a couple of hours a day. So I started also taking that seriously and I would meditate with a group. Back then I was living in Michigan, so I would meditate with them for two hours a day. And I would sit with the pain in my neck. The pain was excruciating, but interestingly, within the moments of the pain, I would experience moments of complete painlessness. There was no pain. It was sort of like miraculous. There was no pain within the pain. I don't know how to describe it. It was very like surreal and metaphysical. <laughs> and that got me thinking like, wow, um, this just was sort of like mind over matter basically. But also, I mean, this could, does not necessarily have to apply to everyone, but maybe in some cases, because I realized that there was a lot of emotions held inside my body that were creating the pain. So it wasn't just about the bone structure. These emotions are what affected the bone structure, but that's not where it started. Because I remember the doctor was like, oh, you're too young to be having this condition. Like, how come? I was like, I don't know. But, um, I mean, I grew up in the war. And the Lebanese Civil War was pretty intense. And um, my childhood was somewhat traumatic. Despite the fact that we also got to travel, like you mentioned in my bio. Uh, we lived in the Far East for quite some time. But the... The years that were spent in Lebanon were not easy. So um, I think also part of the 
uh, issue in my neck is ancestral as I sat with it more over the years because it's been many years now since I had that diagnosis over the years I realized that the reason why I had this condition at an early age was some sort of um, ancestral trauma or karma that I needed to work through so I'll stop here I don't know what else to share about my journey. There's several other journeys that started as soon as I moved to California and before, so I'll leave those for other times and other um, episodes, perhaps, <laughs> when I'm ready to speak about them. Well, you're, you're so inspiring. That's all I kept hearing as, as I hear you talk. So inspiring. Uh, thank you for sharing your journey. I mean, I think all of us here um, can take so much away from that, and I'm sure there's a ton of questions because I, I feel like we, at one time or another, have suffered some sort of illness. Maybe we're suffering something, and we're we're questioning what are the methods, you know, traditional, uh, Eastern, or or what? How can we heal ourselves, right? And your testament, your neck is fine. You're fine now, right? I think oh yeah. We all have that. Yeah. I mean, I do feel it. It's not healed. I, I bet that if they do a scan, it's going to be the same image. It might be a little better than it was before where the cartilage is not popping out uh, because it was a bulging disc. So it seems like it has reversed. The, the disc is fine now, but the scar is definitely still there because every once in a while with the change of season, I'll feel it. Sometimes I'll wake up with some numbness around my arms and my fingers. And I know it's related to that because it was creating a pinched nerve. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as like being able to function, you know, and use my arms and my hands and all that, I can even do a headstand. And I actually had to stop yoga for two years while I was processing all of that. And, um, thinking that I'm not, I, I, I'm not able to teach yoga when I know that I'm deformed. <laughs> that was the thought in my head. Like how on earth am I going to be able to be or claim to be a yoga teacher when I have this thing in my neck? That's just not going to work. <laughs> so I literally was sitting on the couch for two years before I, um, was able to get back into my yoga practice after the diagnosis. Thank you for sharing. Um, the floor is open for anyone who has a question. This is our opportunity to to find out. You know, maybe we're dealing with something. Maybe what Susie's recommendation is. And she can be our guide today for our own healing journey. If we have any physical or any other type of ailments. Ray, Ray, do you have your hand up? Yeah, Susie, I just want to ask, what's your day-to-day -day like? Like, do you wake up with a sore neck? Because I have similar issues. I have uh, just pain in my neck every day. I have numb hands. So I want to know what's your day-to-day -day like? Do you wake up with a sore neck or how is it? No, I don't wake up with a sore neck. No. Okay. I do have some numbness, like I said, every now and then. And sometimes I'll switch up my pillow for that. Um, currently, I'm not living in the most ideal situation. I sleep on a couch. So I wonder when that's going to catch up to me. But um, yeah, it's not, there's no ongoing pain at all. Especially not like how I experienced it initially. Do you do any exercises? besides yoga and stretches or anything like that? Nothing specific currently, but when I was diagnosed, I did do some physical therapy. Yes, I did opt okay. for some physical ther therapy to um, elongate the spine and sort of push that bulging disc back in. So, okay. and, and the sessions that I did were not that many. They probably prescribed for me about 15 to 20 of them. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you for the question. Do we have anybody else? Uh, any questions? Anything uh, you want to share?
I have a question. So I mean, oh, oh right there, go ahead. No, I just wanted to say um, thank you so much for sharing your story. I just, I really respect the process that you've gone through and all of the things that you followed from your own knowing. So thank you. Thank you, Rihanna. Um, I appreciate that, but also I have to say, um, we all have our journeys, right? Like I'm not the only one who has overcome something like this. Um, uh, many people have, but also many people can. And I think that's something that, that a lot of people don't know. And um, that's part of my mission is to spread the word. Thank you. Uh, Perla has a question in the comments. She wants to know what kind of meditation do you practice? I know you mentioned it. Could you go over that again? I think you said that that was the key to your healing, right? Yeah. I think everybody really wants to know about that. Yeah, it's called Vipassana. It's spelled V-I-P-A-N. Oh. V I P S A N A. Sometimes it's a double S. S A N A. Vipassana. Which means insight meditation. So it's a. Um, it comes from. I'm trying to remember <laughs> my Sanskrit. Um, Ad, the Advaita tradition. And you mentioned that you sit with pretty much anything that arises. So I, I would imagine meditation, I mean, there's no right way or wrong way to meditate, but you probably sit in silence and you allow whatever flows through the thoughts. Yes. You create space for everything to, you don't make it wrong. Mm -hmm. You don't try to push anything away. You just simply sit with that. Exactly. Allow everything to simply be, right? Yes. So it's about uh, not trying to change your sadness, embracing it and allowing it to be there. Like if you need to cry, you can cry while you're meditating. Um, if some dark negative thoughts come in, you're not trying to push them away and be like, no, no, I need to silence my mind. So that's a whole nother kind of meditation that I think sh it can come later once you've actually been able to process all the emotions that you were not able to process before. Because the way the human is, uh, we tend to suppress the emotions that we need to express. We're very good at that because society programs us not to express them. So this kind of meditation allows you to sit with yourself and embrace whatever it is that's coming up for you. Not to label it as bad or good or right or wrong. It's just the reality of what is. This is it. And just being with it for however long it takes. Thank you for sharing. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I feel exactly what you're saying. I mean, as growing up as a as a Hispanic uh, male, right, we're taught, you know, to keep every you know everything's fine, everything's fine, everything's fine, suppressed. And so, not until uh, really the last four years, and even a little bit before that, I was really working on self improvement and really like being conscious about like what am I feeling? I want to feel happy, and you know, this whole pursuit of improvement. But really, the last four years, I've learned to instead of doing this thing called spiritual bypass or saying everything's fine, really like embracing everything. There's nothing wrong under the sun that that comes through, right? Like it's, mm -hmm. it's a matter of just creating that space to feel everything. That I mean, we're human, right? There's nothing wrong, and, and really not accepting yourself really is what it boils down to: accepting yourself, everything, not a single, not with a single thing, not not being rejected. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. And, and that in itself, I feel, is healing, right? I think that is so powerful. 
that's the key to healing, especially when there is some um, emotional baggage or, um, you know, like psychological stuff that's going on um, in our mind. Uh, the stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves and the stories that people tell us about ourselves. You know, if you look at the media and like what it tells women and how they're supposed to dress and what they're supposed to be and what kind of makeup they need to put on and, and it's all because it's a program. It's, you know, like everybody can just embrace whatever they want to wear, whatever they want to look like. It's not like a cookie cutter. Everybody has to look like everybody else and, and follow these uh, trends. <laughs> But it goes on and on, like we can go on forever in that. Right, I think we've been conditioned. It's really what, what you're alluding to. And I mean, I see it more than I've ever seen it before. That this is the way you're supposed to be. This is the way you're supposed to think. This is how your life is supposed to look like. But in reality, what I've learned is be whatever it is that, that wants to be. Whatever it is flowing through here, there's no right way or wrong way to be. As long as you're not hurting yourself or hurting anyone else, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, doing whatever you're inspired to do or be. That's freedom, what you're describing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, I, I, I caught a vibe that a lot of people were so interested in your slant on healing also with, with your artistic expression. Can you speak a little bit about that? Because I think everybody wants to hear a little bit about that. I know I do. Sure. Um, since I've always been drawn to uh, uh, artwork and making art since I was a very little child, um, and then later on, I actually studied it, and I am a professional artist. Like that, I, my dream is to just be making art all the time, and not having to hustle. But um, the this was inspired from my studies, the modality that I created. But it's also something that I have to give credit to the teachers that I worked with, right? Because I, I kind of like shows the things that would work within that context. And mostly I um, did the training with Yvette Rose. I don't know if anyone's familiar with her. She wrote the book on metaphysical anatomy technique, which is actually a process that I've been certified in. But my spin on that, and I remember her saying we could literally make it into our own uh, approach. Like we can use this technique that she offered in whatever capacity we want. And so I, uh, I added the painting process to it where people are painting therapeutically, not to create a painting, not to have a final result that they can frame but maybe they want to frame it and that's perfectly okay they don't have to it could even be shredded or burnt it's just about releasing the emotions that we were just talking about and also and probably psychologists and psychotherapists will know this that not everybody can heal or find relief in meditation for some people it's really difficult like very highly traumatized individuals will not be able to sit for three minutes without having a panic attack right so this method with painting because it brings the person and it's part of my research if you read my dissertation i interviewed artists it's as soon as you start to paint, you're literally brought into the present moment. You have no choice. You can't go to the past. You can't go to the future. You're in the moment painting. And that's why I love painting so much as a way to heal. Uh, drawing is not the same. Uh, there are a few other things that might be like that. It's, you need something to put you in the flow. And another one is dancing. 
dancing is also a really great way to release those emotions. Dancing works for me. I, 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 <laughs> for me, music is healing and dancing is just like, I mean, you feel a release. You definitely, I, I feel I'm in flow when I'm in the, in the scene of music and dancing for sure. Yeah. But also the breath, breath work. The breath work that I offer is also another way but um, sometimes in a session, if I'm working with one person at a time, I will use more than one one of those modalities. It depends on what comes up and what the person needs at the time. Um, it's very individual, right? The healing is a very individual thing. It's a, you can't say one size fits all. You have to cater to every person's needs and what is coming up for them in each situation. You can't be like, oh, you know, this is Vipassana. It worked for Susie, so it's gonna work for these 10 people. No, it's not like that. <laughs> and, I appreciate and, you bringing awareness yeah, to that. Yeah. Also, um, it requires the practitioner to be empathic right so that they're in touch with what's happening for the individual and what might be of assistance to them if you can't get into that place perhaps re referring them to somebody who might be able to assist them in that way oh you know what i, I missed perla's question she asked if, if she practices tm meditation which is Transcendental meditation, and she's asking if it's similar. I, I'm a TM practitioner, and I know that the answer is no. No, the an, yeah, the answer is no because with transcendental meditation, you're trying to transcend whatever it is that's happening in your physical body. So you're trying to get to that higher state of consciousness, and that's doable. You can, you can do that while you're still carrying a lot of baggage. So the recommendation is to work through the baggage first, and then the experience with the transcendence will be more profound. Right. I, so I, kind I, of I working. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just want to say, so just working from the ground up, basically, if that makes sense. Right. When I got introduced to TM, I mean, I experienced a shift within the first week. But that is still didn't mean that I was dealing with my stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was still there. Yeah. And so not until later did I realize, wait a second, I got introduced to this term of spiritual bypass. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's what I've been doing. Yes. I feel great, but I haven't been dealing with anything, <laughs> really. Yes. So, yeah. Well yeah. said. I so appreciate that there's not one size fits all type of healing modality. Mm -hmm. Everything works as long as you know it's something that resonates. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad you shared the word a spiritual bypass because I pretty much did that throughout my life until my 40s. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, we lost somebody. It seems like a call dropped or something. So anyway. Oh yeah, that's a great. I have to jump. It's having a little bit of pain. Okay. <clears throat> So the floor is open. If you, David, did you have a question? Me? Yeah. I saw you. I thought you unmuted. Well, okay. yeah, I think I'll share a little bit um, what's going on with me. Um, I don't know why I get so chicken to talk about myself. 